Well, thanks for having us here at Bright and Early. Starting our day with you, this is fun. Um, feel free to grab food, you know, if you need um, during this presentation. I'm Lydia with Radio Resource, and with me I have Rob. He's um, our Vigilant Integrator. We have Fred with a Vigilant. He's all things door access control, um, so he'll be doing kind of the diving into the door access. And then we have Kyle, who is with a Vigilant. Actually, were any? Do you recognize any of these guys? Didn't you do a demo for a Vigilant yeah, here? I Jeff. Uh, Jeff. Okay. Two summers ago. So, yeah, I think that's yeah, right. And a mod as well. Yes. Um, yeah, so. yeah, I talked with a mod. He told me that um, he could come and done that. He loved that demo. So, um, what's going to happen is I'm just going to do kind of a quick intro about us, Radio Resource, um, talk a little bit about Motorola and Avigilon, then I'm going to hand it over to Fred. We'll go deep into the door access, show you what he has to show you, then hand it over to Kyle, who's going to wrap it up and kind of talk about how bigger picture, how things can integrate, how you can really maximize your investment. So, um, who we are. Radio Resource, that's a picture of our building. <coughs> nice car, it's not mine. Um, so we are a Motorola Elite Specialist Channel Partner. We were established in 1989, so we've been in business for 30 plus years. We are Motorola's largest dealer in Colorado and the surrounding states. We're highly experienced with the Motorola Solution suite of products for um, safe schools, not to be confused with school safe, <laughs> which is, um, they do a similar solution, but Motorola's safe schools, that's Motorola's term. Um, we are locally owned and operated with full-time technicians and support staff at our office in Wheat Ridge. Now, all of us in the room are local. I am extremely local. I'm in Windsor, actually. <laughs> so I have one kid over at Severance and a couple playing lacrosse for Windsor. They had a game last night. That goes well. <laughs> um, so we have a lot of communications critical clientele and by communications kind of big picture solutions. So I will talk about the school districts that we work with in a minute, but I wanted to highlight some of the big projects that we do. We actually work with the NFL. And so we've done the past 33 Super Bowls, including this last one in Arizona. Our first one was in 1991. And what we do is we come in, we build a big, huge repeater system, trunked, and um, bring in thousands of radios, program everything to all their hundreds of talk <coughs> groups and manage everything for the events leading up to game day. They have all these parties and things and, um, and then game day itself and make sure everything goes off without a hitch as far as you know the communications and security side of things so that's uh, a pretty pretty big project and there's a reason that we've been asked 33 years to come back and we believe it's because of our quality workmanship and our excellent level of customer service so we also work with the Denver Broncos and the Colorado Rockies and public safety and government agencies lots and lots of them so these are customers where their, their systems need to be on point. The technology needs to be working. I mean, things happen, but you know, you, you deal with them, you fix them, you get them operating. So we have extensive educational experience. Um, I really want to highlight this because we are in a lot of school districts and we have been, a lot of these districts we've worked with for over 10 years. Um, so those, you know, the technology's changed. They've, we've grown with them and uh, but the original systems that we put in are still there, or they're updating, upgrading, those kind of things. We're in Boulder Valley School District, Westminster, Aurora, Johnstown Millican, Jeffco, Littleton Public Schools. I won't read them all, and this isn't all of them either. It's just what <coughs> it's on the page. Um, so, in those school districts, yeah, you can go. Oops, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'll try to talk faster. Quicker, <laughs> quicker. Um, in those school districts, Yes, we are radio resource, we do radios. But we do so much more than radios because we're Motorola, we're a Motorola partner. And Motorola um, has such great technology, it really has what they would call an ecosystem of technology. And so yes, we'll be talking about door access today. We have video analytics here. Um, there's the access control here, the radios. Um, I know you guys are already using the Motorola Moto Turbo radio system and I know that because like I told you I've worked with a mod over the last year supporting um, your radios um, but 
We also do, there's other things, dispatch solutions, bus communications, um, incident management. So if you can really um, tie these all together, if you wanna go to the next screen, this is just kind of another uh, way to view that ecosystem. So your radios that you guys already have invested in are over here. Um, today we're gonna be focused in on the access control piece. Next week we'll focus in on the video surveillance. Later on, Kyle is gonna really bring this all together, talk to you about a free product called Orchestrate. It's a web-based platform that you can utilize to maximize the potential of the technology and the features um, that you've already invested in. You already have that. It just opens doors to automate workflows for you. It's pretty cool. So, and, and the cool thing is, you know, it's not like, oh, you have to, you know, have every system on the screen for something to work. Your radios are already working for you. Your door access control, it's gonna work for you. Same with the video, but you can really tie all the solutions together into an integrated full package solution. Okay, so next slide. All right, so why a Vigilon door <coughs> access control manager? Um, so remember I already mentioned that a Vigilon is your kind of leading manufacturer as far as what you are looking at and interested in. Um, so Fred's gonna really show you why a Vigilon, but I'm just gonna cover kind of the high level overview of why we believe a Vigilon is the forerunner. Um, it's a North American company, first of all, which we believe in. We, we think that's a, a, a real plus. The compatibility with your currently installed hardware, your Mercury, um, this is gonna work perfectly with that same, um, same technology. Um, no added costs from the manufacturer. This is a big one that saves on the total cost of investment for our customers. So there's no recurring fees, no upgrade charges for new versions on the access control manager. There's no support service agreements, no support maintenance agreements. It's, there, there aren't those hidden fees or those recurring fees that you might be experiencing currently. Um, I just wanted to add that there's actually free tech support. Everybody on your staff can call a Vigilon for free tech support. Thank you, mm -hmm. yeah. Is that under free training or is it? Well, it's part of free training. Yeah, okay, part of the free training. So there's also um, this piece of unification between the access control and your video surveillance. So, I mean, obviously if you go with a Vigilon for both, it's a completely unified system. Um, and then speaking to what I was talking before, also with your other Motorola solutions that you already have the free training, the free support, and multiple lines of direct support. So not only can you call and get the free direct technical support with the Vigilon, but you also have each of us in this room who, like I said, are local. We're not flying in from somewhere. We all live and work in this area. So, okay, next one. All right, I, is that it? Okay, so before I hand it over to Fred, I forgot that was my last slide. <laughs> Um, before I hand it over to Fred, I want to turn it to you guys. If maybe you guys could remind us of your name, tell us your role in the district, and I'd like to hear from you. What do you like about your current system? Um, and we're talking door access control. So assuming that you have some kind of knowledge of that system, and what do you not like? So that we can kind of speak to that as we're going through this demonstration. So if you want to start, and then after that, I'll hand it over to Fred. Sure. Yeah. Um, BJ Noon. I'm a district technician, computer technician. I don't often deal directly with the door access system. That's more indirectly, but um, you know, I definitely can say that you know, love the ability to kind of just shut down cards and have that sort of quick and easy access to assign certain um, <coughs> access to people and have the things on the schedule. It's been nice when it works correctly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trevor. Uh, Trevor Hoffman, Timmons. I'm the director of technology, um, and. As I think about our current system, you know, I like that we can schedule doors for, you know, programs and times and unlock and lock. Um, I have worried in the past some of the ways we've implemented, like, panic lock down buttons. And, I mean, once upon a time, it could take up to a minute after we hit the button for the doors to lock. And that was a programming issue. But um, 
really, um, I think that's part of why we're trying to do our due diligence in looking at, you know, part of it is the system and what's baked in the system. Part of it is what, what kind of aftermarket add-ons are we trying to do and alerts and pieces coming out and what's going to bog down in that system and overload what's what's kind of a crappy hack and, and what, what's a fully supported solution um, because we want to be able to look our you know public the parents and students in the eye and say yeah when we hit a lockdown button the doors are actually going to lock um, and that yeah. hasn't <coughs> always been the case um, and part of that it isn't practical to test every day. It is practical to test a couple times a year, but knowing that that process doesn't fail a week later after the test or whatever, I think is really important. So I think, you know, that's really one of my bigger concerns. Okay. Uh, John Ellingson, I'm the network administrator for the district. Um, other than programming my switches to make sure they work with the uh, access control systems, um, I really don't do much with it other than patching in and out of loading. Um, but backing up with Jeff, um, what I do like is the <coughs> central location, being able to access the entire system from mm -hmm. one location, uh, being able to test door controls from that location while we have a uh, school tech on site. Um, the other thing I do like about what we have right now is, like BJ said, being able to assign certain rights to specific badges so like if we assign coaches to one particular uh, unit, coaches only are able to access the buildings during this time frame on these dates, on these doors, so. Mm -hmm. Scheduling seems to be a recurring. <laughs> okay, that's good. All right, Jeff. Yeah, uh, I'm Jeff Van Winkle. Um, I telecommunications technician, but also, I mean, I, I do all of the programming, so uh, for all, all, the, all the doors, district-wide. Um, for me, it's the, the scheduling part is great. I like the granularity of it. So the ability to what John is saying to program for specific users, uh, specific rights, uh, specific things, um, you know, different schedules that we can apply to, you know, like on today, it's a, it's a PD day, so we can close the doors, you know, ac across the district with a, a simple click, just adding, adding the date. Uh, my comfort level with the system, you know, we've seen it grow. So, um, you know, we started 12, 13 years ago with this and so the solution that we have in place has been around about that long and so I've been able to grow with it so there's a comfort level for me so when you ask me the things that I like the most that that really is what it is um, so um, the I think the frustrations that I've got are going to be more like hardware based hardware you know that's why I wanted to see what, what the what the door looks like we've had different issues where a door comes offline and Muliana is removed and the wire gets bent or, or trimmed or something and so then being able to get out there and, and make it make it work as opposed to having to put in a service call so there are some things that I think that we can handle locally that we've just not been doing to this point um, so a better understanding of, of what we're looking at from a hardware side of things is, is kind of what I'm looking for uh, but maintaining the schedule the ability to, to do all of those things for our users and uh, all of our schools as well Sure. Uh, my name is Stephen Glardy. I'm the Enterprise Technology Manager. And my biggest concern <coughs> that was brought to my attention recently were these two devices. The one's a Keezy and the other one's a Flipper. Flipper was, had an expose in Wired Magazine about a month ago. And, well, two months ago. And what's interesting about that is that I realized that with these simple devices that you can buy for 250 bucks, a lot of the doors that we have in our district because of the technology we have can be killed. Can, can, they can get in pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And it's 250 bucks. Like the kids around here have that much money. They can buy this kind of stuff. They can be devious. So we need to, my concern is, is making sure the technology cannot be thwarted and I wanna make sure that the security is where it needs to be. Um, we've done a fairly good job in an ad hoc fashion in fortifying our schools. We've been adding door access. I think with the bond and with this process that we're going through right now, 
we're going to fully cover our entire district. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, hopefully Motorola and Vigilon and Radio Source can fit the bill. I, I will add to that really quick too. I'm sorry, you know, just uh, as Stephen was talking, I thought about, you know, one of the other frustrations that we've got has been the idea that, you know, we, we need to be experts sometimes. So I've got to do a, a lot of the work of the research and, you know, it's such a advancing technology, you know, there's all, there's new stuff that's all the time and with, with different hats that I wear in the district, it's hard to stay on top of things. So, you know, we were talking about, uh, you know, one way that kids, you know, can, can you know, spoof something or, or get into a building or make it unsecure that's a concern but you know we've got things as simple as rocks and doors you know we've got you know not now kids are using magnets for pieces of tape over you know and so we had door sensors that we wanted to get installed at one point because that's what we thought you know it turns out a door sensor doesn't do anything if you know you have the latch uh, taped down so you know i want i want a, a partner that's going to be able to talk with us and say hey here's some cutting edge stuff here's here's what's on the horizon Here's the stuff that's coming. Here's what you should think about for your school district. Maybe not today, but in the next six months, in the next year, these are these are some technologies that, that you might be able to benefit from. You know, I, I want somebody that, that is partnering with us as a school district, understanding that we're not going to stay on top of the industry like you. Um, that's why we have you. Uh, what's the standard for door hardware in the in the district? Uh, are, like, are you talking mercury boards? Or uh, well, Legion versus us Alloy or. Uh, the hardware, hardware. We're looking at, poten at making that standard through this process. Okay. So yeah, we that, are open to. Believe me. It'll be through the Legion. Grant Troyer with the Legion. Okay. I think he's gotten with Mike on that. Um, he sent me emails. So we're going to have a standard of our hardware that we're going to be using. Right. Yeah, Fantastic. Classroom versus exit entrance yeah. devices. And do you want to share with us who you are and what your role okay, is? Okay, uh, yeah, my name is Steve Ryder. I'm with uh, the maintenance department, so I, I take care of all the locks, keys, windows, doors, pretty okay. much that, and whatever and, else you need me to yeah, do. And everybody else was kind of sharing what they like about the current system, what they don't like. Do you have anything to add there? Well, I know a lot of it, we have problems with the card access, because it's up and down a lot. I mean, that's just not much we can do with that. Um, I think a big part, yes, is people putting rocks in doors, magnets, which I'm going through and doing all new lock sets in all the schools and uh, corridors so that we get away from that. Uh, um, but as far as the hardware, I'd like it to see everything go um, Von Duprin. I know a lot of our schools have different stuff in each school, which makes it challenging to me because a lot of this stuff is outdated. So for me to get parts has been yeah, the I mean, parts is the issue. Parts That's why you want to create that standard, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, because there's one thing: fewer <clears throat> parts, uh, fewer <throat> inventory, less budget. Right? Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because right now I have the schools. I have three different types of, of door hardware. Right. So I have best. I have uh, Sergeant, and then I have uh, Von Duper. Okay. Nice. So, well, and I prefer uh, Von Duper. <clears throat> That's great news. Uh, yeah. Fred and I both used to work in Legion. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. So very familiar with the uh, the product set from Legion yeah. and, and Schlage. It's world yeah. class. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you've heard the, the spiel from the Legion team, but oh, yeah. uh, there is a reason that people choose them over and over mm -hmm. because of the, the longevity, the durability, and the simplicity of it too. The simplicity <clears> too. <throat> Have you guys ever looked at the RURM product? Mm, not as of yet, no. Okay, fantastic. What is that? Uh, it's actually a door retraction unit. So in the, uh, like in a Von Duprin crash bar, you can install a wireless device that basically undogs that door on a command. So if you're pressing mm -hmm. a lockdown, it can undog all those crash bar doors. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're just, you know, doing regular maintenance for uh, buildings closed for the day, mm -hmm. um, it makes that an automatic electronic process. Yeah, rather than having to go around and undog all the doors. Yeah, and one thing we have now is, uh, um, power assist hinges, that's where all of our electricity goes into or down through removable mullions. Right. Which a lot of times when people are taking those <laughs> removable mullions out um, that are borrowing our schools, they don't take their time with it and then it shares all the wires off and then we gotta go back and, oh, yeah. and redo those. So um, yeah, something remote like that, wireless would be great. Yeah. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna hand it over to Fred.
we're gonna get into the door access. Um, keep in mind, we will be back next week. I know you just can't get enough of us, right? Um, and so we'll you know, go deeper into the uh, video and Kyle's gonna do that one. So um, feel free to ask questions along the way and we'll have time at the end also. So, um, all right, Brad, you're up. I'll let you move that for me. So, so yeah, feel free to ask questions along the way and Kyle will answer all of them. <laughs> so, so, no, I, I, I appreciate being here. Uh, it, it, it's exciting. I, but like Kyle said, we both used to work for a legion and, and we, we ended up here at, at, at different times, but, but it's, it's fun. It's a good company. We, we, we've spent, you know, one of your questions was, you know, what, what is the future, you know, and, and, and how does our product fit into it? And, and this is, you might think of this as corny, but, but our product is the future. But I, I can't think of a company that has spent more on R&D and everything else um, that, than Motorola has. I mean, they, they just, they, they spend a lot of money trying to figure out where we're going and what we're doing, and, and they've invested a lot. It, it's, it's, really, it's really a good company to work for. They're, they're, they're pretty quick, but not too quick. For example, um, the last the last couple days we were working with a, another manufacturer, um, uh, Salto, and I don't know if you've used any of their product yet or not. But you know, just, just the idea of keys and things like that, and re, you know, reducing that so you don't you know wonder where your keys are. Right? You know, did you get all your keys back from every employee that's ever left the, the, the district? You know, do, do you even know where all your master keys are? And you don't have to answer that question if you don't want. To. You know, stuff like that, but. But the, the, all these companies, we do business with all of them. So, you know, like one of your questions was, do we need to? You know, it, it's probably a good idea to standardize on the same hardware and, and do that. Do you have to with us? You don't have to, because we work with a, a lot of different manufacturers, so you can do those kind of things. So, um, it, it's it's just been, it's, it's definitely been a lot of fun working with this company. Um, the, the reason I brought up Salto is because <coughs> 2018 we wanted to have that integration with Salto and we, we started working on it our smart people started talking to their smart people and and in 2019 we wanted to have that integration and and part of that might be okay we were slow and maybe it wasn't the, the, the thing on the top of the, the burner but but at the same time um, we, we did it right you know we came out with that integration in 2021 and, and it works great we have an integration with the Legion with all their wireless locks. So, did you guys use any wireless locks right now, or anything no, like that? No, we're not. Okay. Yeah. So, so that that's a possibility. You know, just just that whole idea. Of what do you want to do with everything? So we can we can move along. And so, so our our product is is IT friendly. So it's probably more friendly to you guys than it is to me, because because a lot of you guys have an IT background. So. So instead, like a, a person, a user, we call them an identity. You know, that's a kind of an IT thing. Our collaborations, we call them collaborations with, you know, the, the identity providers and different things like that. So th there's a lot of different terms that we, that, that our team, when we built the product, we, we saw years ago that, that it was more and more being managed by IT than, than it was being managed by facilities. So that's how we kind of built the product. So feel free if I if I miss some key points, Kyle, feel free to um, jump in. Well, are you guys currently using Active Directory to populate card identities? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly the platform that an ACM is built to collaborate with. Yeah, so, so those kind of things, well, you, you know the benefits of those if you're using them. So you, you remove somebody, they're gone. You know, and in our system, they're, they're not just gone from their car doesn't work anymore. If they did have access to the, to the system as an administrator, that shut off automatically too. So, so we don't have to worry about those kind of things. So um, I, the, the slide, making your job easier, right? Just, just what, what, what can we do? The, the system's easy. I'll get into that and show you just the system and how easy it is to use. And it, it's scalable. We can add as many users as you want it. Well, no, that's not true. <laughs> right now, we, we have a limit of about 2,000, somewhere in there. This year, we're probably gonna come out with e either four or, or possibly as many as 10,000 on a single server, so. 10,000 doors. 10,000 doors. Not yeah. users. Yeah, users are, are what, 500,000, I think, is the user limit right now, and, and 
five million, or is it 15, 150 million? 150 million, I, uh, there might be a slide <laughs> in here, I'll, I'll leave it alone, so. But, but it, it's, <clears throat> the, the solution, um, the, the way it was built is, is just good. It originally, it, it was an acquisition of Motorola, as it was started out as a company called Red Cloud. I don't know if some of you have been around long enough to know what it was called back then, but, but it, it's, it's, it's progressed. And, and we've, you know, one of our goals is to be the biggest. That, that's, you know, I guess all the financial people always want us to be the biggest, right? But, but really, we, we want to be the best. And, and I think that's what Motorola is all about. I mean, they're just doing a really good job making it a good product. We've grown pretty much organically. L lately, we've acquired a few companies, but we've grown pretty much organically 30 plus percent a year in, in our access control. So we're, we're getting to be a pretty good sized access control business. Um, go ahead. Um, a, a lot of the features, you know, it, it's open source, so, or not open source, but it uses open field hardware, meaning we, we don't create our own hardware, we use Mercury. You know, a lot of companies do use Mercury, and it is, you know, one, one of the best on the market. Um, one of our other companies, we, we manufacture our own. Um, in, the, in the video, we, we manufacture our own. So, so there's, there's different ways to play that, but, but we use Mercury. That's a good thing for, for you guys right now. So, you know, one of your questions was, do we replace things? And I, I looked at that as, you know, do, is it all the lock hardware that you were asking about, or is it all the, all the access control? And, and my opinion is, again, because of where we fit in the market and all the stuff that we can work with, all the different product, you know, you can do that with a realistic budget and, and you can do it on your time. And, and yes, I would standardize as much as you possibly can on things, you know, but we can work with Mercury. So, so that was a good thing. And, and so that if you change direction, which we hope you do, <laughs> you know, you don't have to throw everything out. You know, actually probably 90% of what you invested, we're gonna keep using. And, and if you want to use different different reader technology or something like that, it's easy to put that on Mercury and, and use it because that that's a good back end product that every, a lot of companies use. Not everybody. Um, what else is on here? It's browser based. Um, we we have hot fail over if you want. So um, let, let's go to the integrated maps. Let, let's go to the next. You well, actually, here. let me add that you know the ACM sits in a Linux box. Um, that's what's on. Oh, that's what's on the next one. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so on, on this one, it's a. <coughs> again, you guys are IT. A lot of you are IT related, so, so you probably know what a hardened Linux box is better than I do, right? But, but so, so that that's secure. You know, it, it's maybe not 100 percent, and but but it's a lot more secure than, than a lot of other product that's out there, and, and you you can't get into it that easy. You know, you guys don't even get into it. You browse into it, and that's it. You know, so you can't get in and change a lot. Even even our VM. So if you want to put it on your network, it's still a, a, a hardened. What is it? At? O, o, I I can't remember what the file's called. Um, but but anyway, it's it's a file that you're just going to put on your VM. You know, you're not going to mess with that file. You know, so so it's there. It's hardened. You can't get into it that easily. So we have three ways to deliver that. Hello. <laughs> and, oh, you know, the, the first one, go, go ahead and go to the, well, wait a minute before you go. Yeah, this, this one here, this is where we talked about, you know, 2048 is our limit right now on doors, 500,000 users, um, identities, we call them, and, and everybody could be an operator, that, that's why those are the same thing, if you want everybody to be an operator. That 2000 limit is actually just per server, it's not per site, so you could actually have 10,000 doors, but you might That's need four servers. Ask on that yes. yeah. Okay, thanks for that. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. Good, good clarification. And then, yeah, 150 million transactions can be stored. stored. So, go ahead. so it comes in three different <coughs> files. So, you know, I, I would probably recommend, you know, one of these two guys here. You know, so, so either Enterprise Plus, which gives you the RAID capability and you have hot swappable drives and if something goes down, you're good. Um, and I, I thought that was the best thing until I learned you know, more about what, what the, the virtual does. And if, if you're running that in your own environment, you, you've got the backups and everything going. And you know, so one of those two is obviously, or not obviously, but where, where we at least recommend you be. 
and, and so, so you can choose between those two and, and they have the same <coughs> limitations on the high side. These other two, like, like this will only go up to 400, this will only go up to 32 doors, so they're, they're not really choices. And I, I think I covered all that. So this I, I covered kind of briefly, but, but it's, it's, you know, these, these are all the, all the different um, integrations that we have with different products. So, well, it, it kind of opens the door. How much credential shopping have you guys done? Obviously, you guys have found out that there's uh, some serious uh, flaws in credentialing, right? Um, have you guys shopped to a legion for their credentials and their secure key that they can offer you as a custom key? We, 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 we started to get into looking at that, but we, we also knew this project was coming. And okay. so the idea that we would have that conversation now, um, we, we, haven't, we haven't done a lot. We, we had a conversation with Schlage, um and talked to HID about some of the different credential things that they had. So right. we, we had a couple of those calls set up within the last six months to a year. Okay. I, don't, I don't remember when those took place, but yeah. Do you use your credential for anything other than going through doors? Do you have, have, do they, are kids credentialed? No. Okay. Um, do you guys use the credential on the copier as well? Uh, yeah, no, not, not, no, no, we don't no. use the credentials just for doors. That's just for doors. Um, so there's a couple things to look for when you're looking for a credential, and that's going to probably be an outside decision. Well, it's part of this access control decision, right? Because you really want to, if you're picking out new readers, you want to have the credential that goes with that. There's a couple different schools of thought. HID produces the I class or CIOS card. Uh, that means that there is memory in that card that and it's a smart card at that 13.56 megahertz. Uh, that memory on the HID side is locked up. Um, when you pay to use it, they will open it for you. That means that now you can use that card for multiple different systems, whether it's the copier, time clocks, whatever. Uh, the same card could be used to manage all of those. Um, when you get to a legion, they can create a custom key for you, which uh, certainly makes it harder for somebody to hack. Um, and it, is uh, a custom key format that basically is uh, you guys use. Uh, they a Legion programs that for you, and you can get your cards from a Legion. It's highly recommend, and that's a MyFair Desfire EV2 card, and that is free on that side to to use the storage in that card. So whether you know you're using it for the cafeteria or the copier, you can write to that card. There's no additional cost. The um, HID model, there is cost on that. Um, both companies do make Bluetooth credentials that can ride along with those. HID makes an Origio uh, mobile access card format so that that portal communicates directly to ACM. So essentially, you're just managing one database. Allegiant to this date, has, uh, we're still waiting for the completion of that um, mobile credential uh, portfolio. To, I mean, the, the, it's gonna work, but the database integration between ACM and the Allegiant credential is not quite there yet. Uh, Fred, are you, yeah, that's on the road map, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So essentially, uh, what I want to make sure though, is that you guys understand if you pull credentials from somebody out of Active Directory, and you have a, you know, a card and a mobile credential assigned to that person in ACM, just you pulling their credentials is going to uh, make it so that none of those credentials work, right? Whether it's the mobile, the card, or any other form of credential. Yeah, so so you guys, it sounds like you're kind of going down that road with Schleg product and that kind of thing. Anyway, I, I, I was talking to Kyle earlier today or yesterday, and I I, I probably shouldn't say, but but I said, why do I have this issue with iClass versus this person? He says, because you have orange running in your blood. But that, that's an old religion thing. But anyway, <laughs> but they both do have good good products and. And I, and I like that, the, the whole idea with the, you, you know, being able to have your own key, custom key is, is great and that doesn't cost you any extra. So anyway, then there's other products that you can use too. So, so the, the idea with, you know, being locked into any one thing is, is not necessarily the case. Um, if, if with hardware, with, with readers and software, we can work with different product and things like that. So. You know that there's different manufacturers. Like right now, that there's been a problem with with inventory and getting stuff and supply chain, and and, and a lot of smaller reader companies have been able to produce and, and get those keep those flowing. So so they've made 
inroads into a lot of people just saying, hey, ours is available and you, you have to have something and you say you use it. So we do give you the option to, to be able to do things like that if you need to. So I think we can move on there. Uh, but even if they're using multiple different cards for the, the, the amount of card formats that you can program to, into ACM is pretty extensive. So even if you are using HID for middle schools and a legion for, you know, with a different card format, those can all be programmed into ACM. Which, uh, we used to have a fashion. Actually, I think Mercury has a limit that's, that's a lot lower than what we can put in our system, but, but you, you probably won't go beyond the Mercury limit, which I think is 16, but we can have like 128 different card formats in our system, so it, it, it's a lot that you can do with it if you need to. So, um, and, and then one, one of your questions was security. So, so, you know, what is the most secure? You know, the, the MyFair is probably the leading edge you know, product, the I-Class can be also, you know, the, the FIB class, and we, we can handle all that. We're FIBS compliant. Yeah, so the cards we're talking about, like MyFair, the CIOS cards, those are commercially available products. The government uses other products like the CAC card that they use on the bases at the, you know, uh, government facilities. Those cards actually get read to a reader that looks just like the readers that you guys have, but it actually communicates to another server back to Homeland Security so if you're on the do not fly list, you are also on the do not enter the building list. Yeah, so, so as far as security goes, I, I mean, for the next three, five, ten years, I, I think we're on the cutting edge of that and, and we can offer whatever you need to offer. The, the cards being copied and those kind of things, obviously if, if you're using some of the 125 kilohertz stuff still, that's very easy to copy. I'm probably even a lot cheaper than, you know, 250 bucks. You can probably copy those for 20, 30 bucks. Uh, so, so we, we, you know, the, the code going to the credential and the readers that, that make the most sense, you know, those are, you know, the smart readers and the smart cards are where we want to be. Do we still have a hard stop at, at 1030? Yeah. Or, sorry, 930. Yeah. I, I think since we started you late, we'll go a little bit over. So I, I have a hard stop, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, we'll keep going. But the, this page really, third-party integrations is pretty important. It sounds like you guys already use Raptor, and Raptor is currently writing their integration to ACM. That is, uh, that just project just started happening. They expect to have that released before next fall. Um, DMP intrusion, Bosch intrusion, do you guys use intrusion in any of the buildings? Uh, that's something that would basically just add motion detection. You guys already are using cameras sometimes. We have a lot of banks actually uh, eliminating intrusion because they're just using video cameras for motion. Uh, but depending on the spaces that you guys have, sometimes intrusion can be helpful. But it does completely integrate uh, into ACM so that you can monitor your doors. Uh, you can you know, tap on the reader and it can arm the building. And then you... We, t we talked a little bit yeah. about this already. I always get ahead of myself on yeah. slides. And, and Kyle covered this already, really. Yeah. The MS or something else you think it's important there? We, we talked a lot about unification already, and, and, and well, not, not already, but we'll, uh, we'll see this one at the end. This. Next, yeah, we'll see this at the end, and, and you'll yeah. see a lot more of it next week. And, and you'll see some in the demo real quick. So, yeah, that, that, that's it as far as the demo. The, 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 the slides go. Let's see some software, Fred. Yeah, let's see some software if I can get in there. So, so um, to, to kind of, <clears throat> let, let's see, I, um, I'm going to, I'm gonna do this because a lot of times we leave things out and and it, 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 it seems like it's harder to have four minutes go by when you're watching a video, but I'm, I'm gonna play a video, it's four minutes, it tells you a lot about more so I think it's good. good. Is a 24 seven operation. Facility managers and security directors need to know who is in their building at all times, if and when something goes wrong and respond at any hour, day or night. But not all access control platforms are created equal. Traditional software-based access control systems are only accessible from a few isolated office computers, require extensive standalone servers that are difficult for IT departments to support, and maintain and lock organizations into proprietary door hardware, outdated access control software, and costly annual maintenance contracts. But how do you upgrade your building security system without buying new software and servers? How do you manage facility access when you're not at your desk 
or away from the office? How do you find a physical access control system that meets your security, IT, and budgetary needs? Motorola Solutions' revolutionary access control platform is engineered from the ground up by IT and security veterans to provide organizations of all sizes, locations, and security budgets with affordable enterprise-grade security. Motorola Solutions' 100% browser-based access control system gives security staff the freedom to manage facility access anytime, anywhere from a laptop, desktop, or mobile device from any web browser without having to install software. Eliminate the headaches and hassles of purchasing, supporting, patching, and maintaining standalone Windows servers. Motorola Solutions secure, open source, Linux-based network appliances are built to work the way IT professionals work and simplify overall system setup. Connect an all-in-one access control network appliance. Setting up a Motorola Solutions network appliance is as easy as installing a wireless router. Simply connect a power cord, plug in an ethernet cable, and open a web browser to begin configuring the system within minutes, not hours. No software to install, no servers to maintain, no user licenses to purchase. Motorola Solutions ACM easily replaces your legacy access control system and supports open non-proprietary field hardware out of the box. Configure doors, identities, and policies from any web browser. Assign door access privileges quickly and easily while you're on the go. Manage employee and visitor credentials from any location on a mobile device and adjust building access schedules without being tied to a desktop computer. Identities, roles, and policies can be synchronized across all Motorola Solutions network appliances and door controllers in real time so employee and visitor access privileges are always up to date. Control facilities, people, and assets from any location. The Motorola Solutions patented access control platform provides seamless integration, logical identity management, video surveillance, and security event information management systems. Rapidly respond to unauthorized door alarms, immediately stream video from a nearby IP camera, and automatically suspend building and network access until further investigation. Motorola Solutions ACM is the logical choice in access control for organizations of all sizes and industries. ACM Professionals for small campuses, ACM Enterprise and Enterprise Plus for multiple offices, buildings, or locations. ACM Virtual for organizations running VMware or Hyper-V in their IT environment. Motorola Solutions' highly efficient and cost-effective access control platform delivers the highest level of scalability with the lowest cost of ownership. If you're tired of being tied to your desk, interested in access control that's easy to control, and want to get more for your security budget, join the Motorola Solutions team. Contact Motorola Solutions today to learn how easy and affordable it is. All right, thank you. <laughs> So, so there, there's a lot in there and it covers it. It covers it pretty, pretty well. And pr probably we could have done that for four minutes and not listened to me for <laughs> 20 minutes. Um, so, 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 so we, we have some, where did my product go? Okay. So, so to, to get into the product and actually start talking about it, that this is actually the ACC product. So, so I, I, I can start here. Um, and I, I like showing that we, we are, we're actually in here and, and using this product. So, so the so ACC being the video surveillance. The video, the video platform, yeah. Yeah, thanks. But still browser-based, you could access it from Google, Google, Chrome, or another uh, browser. So we get in here, what, what we're simulating, and this is just part of the unification, and I'll, I'll, I'll touch base on this real quick, and then I'll just make, make the, the ACM part of it big, and we can go from there. But this is simulating watching a door with, with one of our cameras. So, so this is you know just people that are walking by the door. They're swiping their badge, and that, that person shows up in the validation. So I can see that, that that is the person. I saw them on the camera, and it's the same person in the badge, et cetera. If I wanted to down here, I can grant access to a door. You know, so, so everything's integrated, and I can see the history in here. And, and I can tie events to, to this so that I can go look up, you know, who came in the door. I can find that. I can go now find the video associated with that. It's all it's all pretty, pretty uh, tied together. So so th this is the ACM or the, the access control manager. It's a, a vigilant access control manager. 
And, and it's pretty simple, you know, so, so the, these three tabs are, are what you would probably end up using most with identities being the, the, the biggest one, you know, so, so if I'm on my monitor tab and I want to monitor events, then, then I can monitor the events and I'll be able to see, you know, the priority, the panel time, the name, you know, the source, the first name, last name, token, and by the time I finish talking here, it'll show me some history. So, so history is coming up, I, I don't know, there it comes. So, so it's just going to show you access, you know, if you have hundreds of doors on the system, this is just going to be, you know, rolling by constantly. Um, you'll see here with these icons that, that I have video. If I have video associated with that event, I can go ahead and click on it and see that video. Um, and it pops up right here in the screen and I can see that. So, so again, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Kyle do more of that later. Not, not today, but next week. Um, you know, if I, if I wanted to search on different things, alarms, verifications, uh, dashboards, I'll, I'll show you the map functionality. So in, in maps, we, we can do a lot of different things with maps. So oh, actually, I, um, well, I'll, I'll show you this one. It's a little more complex, and then I'll, I'll show you the other one. So, um, sorry. So, so this is just a map. It, it, we can do any kind of a background that we want to. This is just a slide, you know, create a slide. The, the magic really happens with these buttons. You know, that, that's where it happens. It's not this whole big thing right here. You can't click anywhere on this button, but this is something that we create in the system. It's just, a, it's just an action item. We call it a global action. And then we have global, um, I can't think of the word, triggers. Um, Linkages. Linkages, yeah, so, so thing, thanks. So global actions are just individual things that happen and take place. Linkages are putting those all together. So if this happens, then, then call the police and set off the siren and everything else. So, so we can do all those kind of things for you. Um, you know, so, so if I want to, I can turn on this, that card wheel. If I want to, if I want to turn that off, I can turn that off. If I go back over to that view, um, you'll see that it's turned off. You know, and, and I can go to regular business schedule. So, so if I were a user and I just, you know, I didn't want to give the, this user access to the whole system, I could give them access to this page. They, they could then, you know, do certain things. It's very easy. It takes about two seconds of training or no training, you know, and this could be open front door, et cetera. So I, I want to back up here just a minute and I'll show you, you know, that there's a, I can't remember if, it, I don't know for sure if I got this going or not. Yeah, Rob helped me out here. And, and, and Rob, Rob's participating. I, I think he's mostly just listening. He, he's in here somewhere, right? <laughs> Rob is the sales engineer for He's the sales yeah. engineer, but, and he's out in Florida. So so if we do have some tough <laughs> questions that I can't answer. Oh, there he is. You are there. Thanks, Rob. So, so Rob put this together for me real quick, just to say, okay, here, here's some things that you can do without any training. And and you know, it looks like I, he created a, a dashboard where this person can do a lockdown. He can clear it. He can open the front door. He can open the video, and that kind of thing. If I click on these, are they get going to? I'll click on it. And see what you did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they, they yeah. work. So, so, um, so he, you can see the. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so 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 that represents a video, kind kind of like the one I showed you on the other on, on the other page. You know, if I want to open a door, I can open a door, uh, and and do those kind of things. So so this is you know, do I want to, um, you know, do, do you know, I, I can set this 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 is all programmed that I can do. So if I can put these maps or these icons on a map, one one of the things we did recently is we changed these. These used to be just a little tiny dot that you have to click on and find, and, and we changed them so they can be sized and you can make different colored ones and things like that. So, you know, we're always making changes like that. So th thanks for helping me out with this, Rob. Um, no problem. So, so then the, the, this is the monitor tab and, and we talked about that. We talked about, you know, it, for example, a dashboard, I can look at everything to see what, what's going on in my system. So I can see that all my panels are up and running, um, my, you know, my, my battery levels, et cetera. Do you, want, do you want to explain this page a little bit more in depth, Rob? Yeah, sure. So the, the dashboard really is uh, designed to give you kind of a snapshot of the, you know, system health. So green is good. 
Um, so there's a lot of green dots there. Uh, that means everything's functioning normally. And then if you have a numerical value, such as under doors, uh, beside the comms value is the number one. If you click on that, that'll actually drill down and show you what the issue is. So when you see a number that indicates there's an issue, drill down, you can see in this case, which door specifically has an issue. And in this case, the door is offline for some reason. Um, so it's, again, this information can be sent to you in real time as an event. Um, this is just a place where you can go and, you know, get a, a snapshot in time, if you will, or a live view of overall health. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. Uh, and and, and so, so, so that's the monitor tab, the identities tab you'll spend a lot of time on. And identities, a, again, the way we do it, you know, it's, it's pretty easy. If, if I want to search on, you know, if I want to do a search right here, uh, I, I can click on a um, search. Um, because I didn't put anything in my filters up here, it's just going to give me everybody in the database. You know, so I can go down here and I can pick people in the database and, and find somebody. I'll, I'll just take a look at, at this person. Um, if we do want to add somebody, we, we can add them really easy. But And when you add somebody, it just walks you through this process. Like every time you say first, last name, you know, it, it'll go to roles. Then I can assign the roles. And, and you can see here that this person has all these roles. As soon as I save the roles, it, it bounces me over to tokens. I can give them, and again, that's that's kind of more of an IT term, right? For, for your credentials, your tokens. Um, and, and so I can give them multiple uh, multiple tokens. You know, they can have a badge, they can have a card, they can have a couple cards, you know, they can have a mobile, they, they can have, you know, as many tokens as you want to give them. There's not really any limit on those, um, it, any practical limit. Um, and then groups, you know, you, you assign groups, you probably do that today. You guys mentioned that, one of you mentioned that you would like to be able to do that and make sure you can do it. We, we can be as granular as you want to be with that uh, and, and assign groups and the rules associated with those groups. You know, the photo, we have a badge creator and we can put put the, the photos in here and do what we need to do with, with product. Um, this is the badge. Um, that, that's that's done. This isn't the creator, but this is the badge for that person. We can look at it. We can edit it, um, and then and then we can do timed access. If you want to give somebody just access, you know, you, you have a contractor coming in or whatever a visitor, and you want to give them access to, uh, you know, whatever building or whatever door, whatever room you need to give them, and you want to give it to them for that hour and that day, then you can create that timed access and and just set it all up right here. It's really easy. to save, save and. They don't have to worry about, you know, do, do I, do I um, take this access away from them or do I get the card back? Do I get the key back? You don't have to worry about any of that because they, they can't get in anyway. I have a question about the badge. Yeah. Uh, can you go back to that real quick? The badge? Yeah. So is this just to print stickers or do you print, do you have printers that would print directly on the the actual card. We, we don't sell the printer themselves, but, but we we give you the tool to be able to get that all ready to print. So there's and, specific and the printers that can print directly to the card. So we just and have to buy one of those, and through this, we'd be able to print badges if we yeah, had. Correct. correct. We, we have a one-time <coughs> integration or collaboration, whatever we call that, with the with the printer uh, to be to give you the ability to print. So that'd be like a license. We have to buy that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just a one-time. I think it's like. MSRP for like 600 bucks. Can you walk me through? I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to stop you, but I mean, can we just interact and go and do sure. things? So show me a, a way that we're going to go. We have somebody from Nutrition Services that's assigned to one of our middle schools. That's where they're at all the time, and they call me up and they say, "Hey, this person's going to cover for Windsor High School tomorrow. How do you sh show me how to add that? Show me show me how you would give access to uh, somebody to a different place for an hour or for a day." Okay. Yeah, the, I, I, I believe, I, Rob, Rob, I don't know if you heard that, but the question was basically, yeah. if I have somebody at a different school, they're, they're going to sub at, at not their own school. And I, I would use time yeah. to access as one of the ways to do that, you know, and, and just give them access to that school and, and then give them, they, they would have a group of doors. So, so I'd say, you know, um, temp access. And I would say, what doors? You know, access group. You know, I would give it a group of doors. Um, I would say what's the you know when twenty four seven or whatever. You know, 
go ahead and do that. And, and then I can do the time, start time, end time. You know, it's, it's if they're just going to be a sub tomorrow, that's it, or the whole week. I could I could put the date in. You know, that would be today. Whatever today is. Ten. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know, and go. You know, it, it goes through next week. You know, and I'm done. So I could add that, and I'm ready to go. So uh, that's just on the individual itself. Yeah. So that's not an access rule that I'm building and applying to a certain card holder group. But I'm actually on a card uh, on a on a card itself. Yeah. I'm able to grant that access from batch screen. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah. And 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 that's pretty easy. You you could have a, another group set up that it would be you know temp for that school and maybe it's already set up and you would just add that to the group sure so, something like that so there's a lot of different ways to do it let me show you how to uh, get the screen to stop jumping just there you go uh, thanks you guys probably appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> i know i did so um, did, oh, did, did oh. that you, you want to add something there rob i thought i heard you uh, no, I was just going to, oh, well, I mean, I, I, the only other thing I would add, and you, you may have already covered it, is just that the, the nice thing about temp access or timed access is that it automatically expires. It's perfect for somebody that's um, just like the scenario that was described. Somebody that's going to a building temporarily just for one day. So you don't have to modify any of their regular access. You just add this temporary access that expires automatically so you can set it and forget it. You don't have to come back the next day and remove their access. So very, very useful tool for those, those one-off access scenarios. Yeah, so again, we're, we're on the identities tab. We're, we're looking at identities. So, so now I can look at access too. So, so I love this. I, I don't know how your current system works and, and covers this, but, but I've worked with systems in the past where you couldn't put this together easily. You had to go to four different places to find this information. And so here it's all laid out. I, I can see what this person's roles are, what access groups they belong to, and what doors they have access to all in one spot. And I, I love that. Um, with transactions, again, I can see all the, all the transactions related to this person. Um, I can do an audit and see everything that's you know associated with this you know before what happened this is you know this is what fred sumner did he he changed the role this is what it looked like before this is what it was after um, that kind of thing and then this is just an additional tab so if you want additional information about that user or that identity that then you can build this this is just a custom tab that was built by somebody that wanted to know license plate and COVID expiration and you know whatever so so they, they were able to put all that in here and just do a custom tab so would we be able to create these or is this initial setup of this system it would come with an initial configuration and the programming of it to begin with would be included correct yeah yeah so that would all be a lot of things would be set up but, but both things will be able to happen everything will be set up one of the unique things about acm and, and a vigilant in general is that you guys can call tech support so so depending on how your relationship is with you know and i think i know these guys well enough to know that they'll give you access and you'll be able to be a full administrator and do anything you want to do so so you can do in any of this that's in the system. We'll train you, we'll give you support on it, and, and that kind of thing. Is that, is that what you're asking? For the most part. There's another the reason I'm, the re This is the reason I'm asking. Is like I wanted to know if, if there was configuration changes like programming, which sometimes can be daunting, right? It's something that our normal users won't, wouldn't want to do, but they would want to page. We really don't want to have to pay somebody to do that for every small right. Right. incremental right. change to the system. And, and so that, you guys that's can where do that. And the nice thing is because we're going into Active Directory, yeah. all your users are going to be, they're already oh, in there. So we're already already there. Now you just have to go through and we just got to figure out the doors and the, and the schools and how you want to lay that out. Okay. Can that be automated by OU and Active Directory? So Some that of it, yeah. If you're a staff member at Windsor High School, then you just automatically get Windsor High School doors? Yes, absolutely. We can yeah. tie a group like that. De definitely. Yeah. And those exactly. groups are pretty unlimited. Yeah, and, but, and, about Active Directory too, what's the, how, how often is it syncing? Because it sounded like it, on, on that video that you showed in a little bit, it sounds like it's almost instant. I mean, we can force the sync anytime we want to, but the system itself, 
same it's seven, every four hours or so. I, yeah, I can configure it however I want. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And that, that's you, you guys. You're, you're the network guy, right? <laughs> so it depends on how much, how quick you want to do that and everything else. So how do so, how do people normally configure that? Um, I, well, Rob, there's a couple Rob, things that, uh, I wanted to add first. Um, when you get the first initial configuration, your integrator that's going to deploy the system for you would help with that part. Then say, for instance, like they also need help collaborating the AD with the ACM piece. We offer professional services to do that. That's factory trained people like Rob that would work with your team to make sure that everything is working as you expect it to work. And then from there, from that point, you have access to free tech support that anybody at the, the school can call. Uh, and then you would also rely on our local Motorola team for any type of training, uh, point of contact, um, anything beyond tech support. And also, you're going to have uh, support from your integrator if you so choose. Is that good on Active Directory? So I just I just want to know how do people normally set up the Active Directory inter integration? Is it does it pull Active Directory every minute? Do you have to force a sync when you uh, add a person? How 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 do we interact with that? Yeah, it, it's configurable. So so it uh, really depends on the size of the database here. Usually, like for a hospital that has. 20,000 cardholders, they're probably going to just sync like two or three times a day. A school district like you guys where uh, pulling somebody's access rights are, you know, probably a bigger issue and you need that to happen that, that to happen faster, typically like an hour is going to be uh, probably sufficient. Typically, the, if you have somebody who's actually detected as a security threat, you want to put them in a banned group immediately in the access control system. That means that if you have just one rule that says if a card that's been banned gets presented anywhere in my system, alert me, right? That makes that change immediate, removes their rights, puts them in a different group that cannot access doors, and you get notified right away. How does it alert? Um, we can, or ACM just natively can alert with external notifications, text, email. When we connect it to Orchestrate, which I'll tell you about in a minute, mm -hmm. then we can get that uh, communication to the radio talk group. So that's the, the difference. Uh, that's a huge difference player. Do you have somebody monitoring your system today? Does somebody sit at a monitoring station so you, when you do get alerts or anything like that? Uh, yes and no. I mean, it, it, would, it would be me. Okay. So um, I have the system up on a screen for most, most of the day. Okay. Um, the alerts are, I, I don't want to say are useless to me, but you know, for the most part, if we've got an issue at Windsor High School, I need Windsor High School to know about it. It doesn't matter for me. So, you know, they, they use the radios I know as, as the primary okay. primary way to monitor Great. the events that are existing. So, Great. And some of the schools, though, do have uh, monitors that, that do uh, okay. watch, but it's not, it's not consistent throughout the district at this point in time. Okay. And are they monitoring cameras? Are they monitoring just access control or both? Uh, they don't monitor access control. They, they would just okay. monitor cameras. Um, we have we have that's that's something that we can customize, but we don't have any doors on there as, as a monitoring ability. They just monitor cameras. Okay. We do have some alerts going out right now from sets at Windsor High School, uh, stating when doors have been opened improperly or that are open for too long. We we are beginning to add those types of alerts and letting the schools know, and they really don't like them <laughs> because it, it, it needs immediate attention if there's something going on like that. True, and it happens a lot. And part of it is figuring out how much. I mean, it, it just hit me while you were talking about this. Like some of that could be just extreme noise, and we get too much noise, and we train people to ignore those alerts. Right. And so figuring out what ones are really critical and important to share uh, you know especially when you talked about that going out over the radio and if, if we every time someone batched into a door it said trevor timmons has entered the building like yeah. across the radio like at some point right. people are going to be like screw these radios it's right. too much traffic so yeah no exactly to your point you're looking for the anomalies the things that you know are going to trigger weird events right that's that's really what the um you know, the process that we're trying to get to here. Uh, Fred 
we're kind of running short on time. Maybe if we could skip through some of these. Well, the, 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 this is the alarms page, so, so you can get in here, you can acknowledge the alarms, and, and it, this has a lot on it because they haven't been acknowledged because they're in a demo, but, but usually you get those really acknowledge them. It's your point, if, if you get too many, then, then we need to take a look at the programming. One thing I want to point out, and then we'll, we'll, we'll show you a couple other things real quick, um, but on every page, no matter where you're at in the system, if you click on the help button, it's going to describe what's on this page and you'll be able to get help and it'll, it'll go through this and explain everything that's on this page. Down at the bottom, it'll give you related links if it doesn't quite answer your question and you can go through that. So every single page has this dynamic help built into it. Um, so, so, so identities, we, we've pretty much talked about those. Profiles, you can set those up. So a certain school is a profile. They, they have access to certain things. I had an alert just pop up. Um, you know, so, so this one I think we've covered. We, we have the Bosch integration, the DMP integration. We, we mentioned those earlier. Um, these are the things that you can see in those. Um, and, and then reports. I'll just t tell you reports real quick. We, we have the ability to, to show you all the different reports. We, we have about, I don't know, 20, 29 reports, I think, that are, that are standard. But every one of those reports, I can open it up. I can modify it a little bit. I can save it as a custom report. And move on. So one of the ones that people look at the most is a transaction report. You know, if I want to run run this report, um, I, I, I heard the other day that one, one of the worst things about ACM is finding this little magnifying glass down at the bottom of the reports page. Um, but but if you do want to edit this report, then I can I can click on that little magnifying glass and, and I can add as many different filters as I want to. I can I can run a report on the panels, the card, you know, whatever I want to do. And then once I do all those parameters, it might have 15 different things here. I can save that as a custom report. I don't have to build it again, and I'm ready to go. And I can schedule that report to, to run every Monday if I want to see that report every Monday. Yeah, a lot of people email a transaction history to, you know, just a you know transaction history at Weld 4, and then that way they have like a continuous, all those Excel reports available for any type of transaction from years ago, easy to find. And then, and then this is this is more, you know, the, the the rest of this can be done by a lot of different people in the system. This is more the people that are really setting it up and doing it. This is configuring the doors, building templates, the panels, you know, those kind of things. All the roles and policies and groups, delegations, you know, that kind of thing can be set up in in here. So we are we are running out of time. So I'll, I'll can I ask really quickly, kind of yeah. while you're on roles before you leave this right now our current system allows us to like assign kind of an access level and so our teachers and general staff are kind of a basic like level one if you will um, but then let's say we hit a lockdown panic button and that establishes like anyone below level five can't get in but all of our police officers in our local jurisdictions have cards that are like a level nine and they can override a lockdown do you guys have a similar kind of yeah system yeah, yeah, and, and we have you know the overrides for anything built in that we can override and, and talk to the Mercury board and override it. So yeah. yeah, we have all that built into it. All those threat levels can be programmed easily and have global linkages as well. And I, and I think we have like one through nine that we when, when we're building different rules and things like that that we can. So it's a similar system. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, is there a mobile app? Yes. What's that? Mobile app. Oh, yes. Yeah. So yeah, and, and that, that's based on, well, two things. If you're talking about admin, that there's an um, Expedite app that, that lets you be able to see this on your phone or portions of this. And then depending on what the functionality is, I can turn it on or turn it off, whether I want it to be on my mobile app. So, so I can do that for the admin. And then the, the mobile credential, if that's what you're asking, you know, that would be based on, you know, Maybe a Schlage mobile app or a the HID mobile app. Yeah, credential provider. Sure. That kind of thing. So yes, we have um, Expedite app, the, the, the admin tool that goes on your phone. Thank you. I have some information about that. Some of these different things that you guys, like the mobile app, Expedite, and these folders that I'll link up to you guys. So I'll let Kyle will wrap it up here, and, well, and then we'll end with some questions. Do you guys have any questions about how to control the uh, door access hardware? 
Well, thank you. So, you know, I, I want to see a little, I don't want to, you know, again, we started a little bit late and I want to be sensitive to the time that you guys have too. Um, I'm, I'm curious about what a client station looks like. You know, I, I think you showed a, a diagram of something, you know, that I wanted to stick on that screen for a little bit, but I wanted to also let you continue on. Um, so I've got an administrative secretary that, that, oh, I forgot to unlock the doors. We've got a, 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 a dance tonight, you know, or whatever. I want to unlock the doors for a couple hours. That's customizable, I assume, yes. to, so, so that's visible to that person. These alerts, the events, again, I'm going to assume that they're customizable. So we have Windsor High School radios and we have all that stuff. And if we want to trigger the Windsor High School SRO to get that and not anybody else, I can, I can do that yep. because Severance Middle School doesn't care that the activity hall is open at Windsor High School. But I, I want to be able to say, hey, go make sure that door gets closed. So yes. it's customizable, I assume, as, as much as I want to make it. Yeah, very great. Okay. Okay. Yes, absolutely. We don't need to spend a ton of time on that. I just I wanted to check that question. Yeah, yeah, but if you were to log in your workstation, it's going to look just like this in the browser. Right. Um, you're going to have access to that. You can basically, with delegations, make it so that, uh, you know, Fred here only has access. He just gets that map and he can right. unlock the door. That's it. Okay. Right. Um, other people, they can't even have access to the software. Right. Meanwhile, um, you know, an administrator uh, can be a couple different levels that have either full access, uh, a secondary amount of access, or a third amount of access, however you guys want to see fit to dole out those. Would it be advisable to do a, an override and give that access to secretaries or somebody in the school? It's usually advisable to have one person available to do that. Uh, with the app, honestly, they, or permissions, they could you know get that from anywhere, you know, any location. They don't have to be tied into your system. Right? Um, the, the reason you would want to do that for maybe the principal is just in case there's an emergency that needs to be addressed. In the video software, ACC, we have an emergency privilege override feature where essentially if something has gone bad, you need to get the recorded video to you know, confirm something, they can press that emergency button uh, and get access to those rights. Meanwhile, it's reported every click in ACC and ACM are basically auditable. So, so know, organization can have full transparency. What's a mobile page look like? I'm thinking about, you know, because it's all web-based is what yeah. you're saying. So right. I assume, and it's going to be credentialed through Active Directory. So if we delegate access to so-and-so, they're logged in um, on the wireless network or whatever with their credentials, they access it as a principal on the playground, they can pull up a page and have that same yeah. that, that same screen, essentially. I mean, I, I know a mobile page is going to look different than an, a, a web page at your desk, yeah. but they'll have that capability. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that gives them that, that ability to, they don't have to be at their desk to lock it down, they can be on that phone, okay. Exactly, and the uh, the mobile app can be programmed to where it's, you know, um, you know, just like we saw in his dashboard earlier where it was locked down and restore, so certainly. I would show it to you, but it's not pulling up yet, but if it does, I'll, I'll show it to you. Okay. Then. So, so you can even you can even modify what what what's your landing page when you log into the app. Sure. That, that can be different. But, but I, I can't remember, Rob. If you're still there, how, how many how many different things can we um, delegate? That what isn't it several hundred actions? Oh, actually, it's uh, over a thousand now. I mean, it seems to be very granular. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about delegations or permissions of the software. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's over a thousand now. So. Yeah. So you can get really granular on what you want somebody to be able to see. And as a, you know, like like that map. If if that's all you want them to see, that's all they see. They can click the thing, the buttons on that map, and that's all they can do. Cool. So Fred, be let's. Does anybody have any questions about any of the tabs or any of the functionality of the software itself? I think one of the things I want to lead or show before we lead into orchestrate is the ability to do an identity search and then how that turns into uh, an appearance search. And so this kind of is where video ties to access control. And so what I'm trying to have Fred demonstrate here is that you can search in your recorded ACC video and you're going to pull up that person's identity. You're going to get that card read that was associated to that reader at, with the camera at that door. You guys are probably familiar with this. It probably does a similar thing in Genetech, but now in a Vigilon, we're with our classified object detection, uh, you guys would see in the ACC demo, that basically means that I can get where that person was at that reader, and then when I have the video, now I can find out how they got to that door. So, uh, you know, that's a different dynamic as well. 
So, so we're going to switch to recorded video. I'm going to click on search. We're going to click on identity. And then Fred, if you can type in uh, one of your coworkers that goes through that badge. Yep, so just click on him. You have the right dates. That's fine. That's fine. I'll just do a quick search. Norm's a very suspicious character, for sure. I can assure you of that. You guys laugh but, like you know him. <laughs> but essentially, what we're looking at is just the recorded video from that instance of that card read to that reader, right? So that's the camera view. In ACC, you're gonna with an analytic camera, you're gonna see that bounding box around that person. And click on that, and now I've got a before or after that car read. So if I need to do contact tracing, it makes it just like that. If I need to you know, find out where he is on campus, I can find him immediately, just from my desk. What do you mean you can find him immediately? Um, so appearance search works in recorded video. That's basically every frame that's just beyond the, you know, the moment that we just said that. So all video that's ingested into the system, it searches for that person, I'll, I'll, along a certain time frame, no matter what cameras? Yep, analytic cameras. Or cameras, that, analytic or cameras that we're applying analytics to. Okay. And that's next group. I was gonna say, and that's a bit yeah. on base. <laughs> yeah. But real quick, if I can show the orchestrate video, I just kinda wanna pre, uh, give you an, uh, just a quick introduction on this. Um, orchestrate, basically, when you have the pieces of the puzzle together, it makes every piece more valuable. So being a Motorola radio customer, guys already have an you know, intrinsic investment in this uh, technology. Orchestrate is basically a, a gateway edge node that sits between the radios and the video and the access control system. So whether you're bringing in uh, alerts from the vape sensor, access control, video analytics, uh, facial recognition, license plate recognition, all of those can feed into Orchestrate to uh, cascade a, a, you know, um, rules and triggers that provide different outcomes. So with Chris here, he's at the uh, Motorola Experience Center in Chicago. Uh, this is about a four minute video as well, but um, he does a fantastic job and he's got great resources with him. So we'll go ahead and let Chris and I have a chance here to explain orchestrate. And um, let's stop that for a second. You can turn the TV up too if you want. I think I have my uh, speakers turned off. Is yeah. Voice? video, data, and analytics, all in one common platform. To help address these common challenges, we call it Safety Reimagine. Through the technology integrations of Safety Reimagine, businesses are able to better detect, analyze, communicate, and respond during an unfolding incident. Today we're gonna to walk you through a action tool we'll that we call Orchestrate. Orchestrate empowers administrators with the ability to configure and automate the communication workflows that control the various security triggers and actions of their technology ecosystem. Think of it like a virtual dispatcher that always knows exactly what to do and who to alert when a potential situation arises. In the case of our prop door and loitering individuals, we're going to create an automated workflow to help our security teams proactively monitor and quickly respond to this incident. From our list of potential triggers, we will select a prop door detection alarm and then select the specific radio users or talk group to automatically receive an alert when an issue is detected. Additionally, we will architect a workflow to respond to the detection of loitering individuals in a sensitive area and also select the specific radio users or talk group to automatically receive an alert. Lastly, when either of these situations is detected, we're going to add an additional action to our workflow to automatically generate an incident report in our incident management software, Ally. We save and deploy our work, and now let's watch how this plays out and see our ecosystem in action. It begins with a prop door being recognized using our powerful Avigilon access control and analytics. Simultaneously, our nearby Avigilon cameras recognize an individual loitering around a secure entrance using powerful and integrated analytics. After this, our predetermined groups or individuals receive an alert of both of these incidents directly on their radios as soon as the events are recognized. Additionally, using the new Moto Turbo Ion Smart Radio, that combines the power of land mobile radio with the versatility of LTE. Users can not only receive analytics-based alerts over their radio network, 
but they can even receive and view live video feeds or other relevant multimedia intelligence right on their critical communications device. Not only can security personnel be notified directly on their device, no matter where they are in the facility, but triggers from analytics-based events are also sent to command centers using software such as Command Central Aware Enterprise, allowing for maximum situational awareness. You can see the notification being populated both on the incident monitoring feed as well as plotted on the map. From here, users can easily populate nearby cameras, run additional video analytics using our Vigilant software, and dispatch additional resources to respond using voice and multimedia directly from their desktop to the field over LMR, Wi-Fi, and even private LTE through our CBRS Nitro solution. Thanks to the automatic and immediate detection and notification, combined with the seamless communication and coordination, the prop door was resolved and the loitering individual dispersed and a potential incident was prevented from occurring. Following resolution of the situation, the reporting and documentation of the incident is made easy because of the automated technology workflows that we created earlier in Orchestra. Upon the initial detection of the prop door and the loitering individual, an alert was automatically generated in our incident management software ally. Following the alert, the appropriate individual can open a call for service, escalate it to an incident, and complete the incident report with any additional details needed. As you've just seen, our unified technology ecosystem helps businesses maximize resources, proactively monitor potential threats, and improve overall response times by integrating and automating the security technology that businesses use every day. Now that's safety reimagined. Fantastic. So that's really where I think the future of access control is going. It's really about automating those workflows to generate information to get it to the right people at the right time and place. That's really what's going to make the difference in that security posture going from retroactive where you're just searching reports, looking through video, to the point where the SRO has the information he needs to you know, address those security concerns in the moment. That's you know, resolving the prop door. That's you know, license plate recognition, banned student, address in the parking lot. Um, you know, being able to look for people and find them wherever they are across the campus uh, you know, in an instant is going to what's make or what's going to make the difference for you. And I have something with that. So I get calls. It might be a day later that they end up finding out what's happened. So building pressure and entrance and exit doors, they'll go open and if the building pressure is really high, which we have a big issue with that out at one of our high schools, yeah. the doors won't close all the way. So yeah. then I have to go out and speed the closures up, well then when that building pressure goes down, then the doors are slamming and stuff, you know, oh, yeah. I don't like doing that. I mean, this is, so that way, if somebody does go out a door and it wasn't, you know, purposely, it's just that the building pressure is keeping that door from closing, Right. would that, you know, notify, like it said, it would notify that that door is open and then somebody could go check it out. Yep, absolutely. So. Yeah. You could see that right on your ACM dashboard for those devices when you click on, that number of how many doors that are uh, mm -hmm. unlocked, it's gonna take you right to those doors. Okay. So you can either test it remotely from there by trying to lock it. Uh, you could pull up the camera that's you know in that area to see if the, the door is blowing with the wind or if it's mm -hmm. actually a security concern. Okay. Can, can those kind of reports be kind of granular so at a building level they can just see their doors but from a district level we can see all of the doors? Absolutely, yes. The system as a whole is so programmable to what the granular level that you want, and the integration of the cameras is what makes the difference. I can't stress that enough. The cameras themselves down the road will help save time maintenance-wise, IT-wise, security-wise, that it's there's not a system out there. Yeah, true. Um, but if you guys needed references or you know uh, who other other districts using ACM, uh, BBSD has about two thousand doors. Saint Vrain has over a thousand doors. Weld Six has uh, twelve hundred doors or something. Yeah, like that. over a thousand. Um, Weld Four is not yet. Uh, Weld Five. So. Uh, Weld Five is uh, going to ACC ACM. Uh, ASD Twenty down in the Springs. Uh, Elizabeth School District, uh, they're installing ACM right now. Uh, so there's you know, a great adoption level and it's well supported in the Colorado market uh, for education, for sure. 
So everyone else is doing it. No peer pressure. But. Right. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's not peer pressure. I'm letting you know it's a safe <laughs> choice. Sure. It's uh, well respected. You know, yeah. one lady's passing that out. I, I think just uh, just a couple questions that I've got. You know, so I want to know kind of your your best recommendation. So you, you talked about the integration with other products and things that we've got. If you were coming into these, because we're looking at this from a brand new elementary school perspective. So we have two of these schools that are coming online. What are you recommending? You know, what, what, what types of doors are you gonna say, you know, I, I, we should have th these types of controllers, this type of mercury board, you know, this type of credential. If, if you are coming to the table, what, what does that look like? Brand new school. Um, Nothing to integrate with at all. I would go ACM. Uh, I would do mercury hardware because it's an open standard allows you even if you don't like ACM in five years that you can move on to something else like open options or uh, Identicard or one of the other 30 other companies that write to Mercury hardware that gives you that flexibility I would go for a new credential that has that custom key that's only specific to you uh, I think that's a huge advantage especially you know, Legion has an advantage that they don't charge for that uh, but makes it easier yeah. for you um, if you're using my fair desfire cards it also means that you don't have to buy them from a legion. You could have a programmed uh, from any other card provider. Um, I would install the Avigilon cameras. It's an, a natively OnBIF platform. Uh, you can use those cameras with any other, uh, you know, video monitoring uh, solution as well. So, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, truth to the theory that create adopting a standard is going to save you time and money because. If you find out that there's a you know a doorknob busted or a crash bar that needs repair, and you have your standard set of parts in your truck, it means that you're only walking to your truck. You're not walking. You're not driving back to the shop, right? So that that is a huge thing on you know standardization. Um, so, before, I know this might be a little bit off topic, but we talked about uh, mobile or digital credentials yes. on phones, and when we talked previously, uh, the Schlage or the Legion, I believe, uh, uh, digital credentials were free at this point in time, but they were looking and going to a paid model in the future. Have they done that yet? That's a good question. I can get that answer for you um, by the end of the day. It's not to be that quick. I mean, we, okay. we'll it, see it, each other next it, next week. Yeah, I'll have the answer well before that. Okay. Yeah. As far as I know, they, they they have it's still free. Yeah. And the. Uh, the, the private key that we would buy that would secure our system over everybody else's is, and you said that was free also. From a legion. From, from a legion. Yes. So are, are they planning on making that pay to play? No, we, that is a legion leverage point that they use to uh, accommodate their customer um, in, <laughs> in rewards for, you know, the, the card reader business and the, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the door hardware design. It's you know a complimentary service. They don't charge for it, and it's just part of their package. Okay. I think it actually went the other way. It went to we, we want to use this as a as a. To your turn for before. Yeah. yeah. It just worries because like uh, over time there tends to be this uh, license creep. Yeah. That you have to continue to buy more stuff, especially if you like. We've been in the Cisco world for a long time, right. and that happens a lot. So, it is with everything. Yeah. I mean, going from a ACM standpoint, the only, the only thing you're going to lice, well, I won't say the only thing, I might not be thinking of anything. The main things I usually see are, are the printer, you know, so that, but that's one license. I, I believe it's, if you're still there, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but I think it's one license for. Print as many printers as you want to, um, and then and then your collaborations, you know, it, you know, but that's still one time deal, with, and, and you can you can use that collaboration in different ways, um, you know. So uh, I, I don't even think it's well, it, it is per per collaboration. You might do AD and, and something else if you do something else, there'd be another license for that. But it's it's really. We, we don't do that. We, we do that. But what we like our growth to be is doing more, you know, doing the next new school that you build yeah. because... Well, it, it's different too that we're, you know, not only the software manufacturer, but we make the hardware as well on the camera side. So we don't have to, you know, keep dinging people for the software every single time, uh, you know, with this required SSA or SMA or whatever. So 
you know, it's just we can support ourselves on that single one-time license. It makes a big difference. Thank you. Uh, I apologize. I have to go. Fred, Fred can stick around. Yeah, if you guys.